Hi there, I'm Joel by name, and this is Nursing Tutorials with Joel. Uh, in this video today, we'll be talking about the anatomy of the heart. We'll be talking about the description of the heart, the layers of the heart, the chambers that make up the heart, the blood supply, the valves, the nervous supply as well. So I'd like you to listen carefully and learn from it. So, this is a diagram of the anatomy of the heart with labels combined with it. Right now, we're looking at the description of the heart. The first thing we need to understand about the heart is that it is a cone-shaped or a muscular organ which is located in the center of the thoracic region of the body, especially or specifically at the mediastinum. That's where the heart is located and it weighs approximately 300 grams although it weighs differently in females than in males it is more heavier in males okay now let's look at the layers that make up the heart the heart is made up of three distinct layers we have the pericardium the myocardium and the endocardium now talking about the pericardium, which is the first layer of the heart. This is the outermost layer of the heart. It is made up of dense fibrous tissue. Now, the pericardium, which is the outermost layer of the heart, is divided into two sub-layers. The first one is the periata pericardium, and the second one is the viscera pericardium. The periata pericardium lines the outer part of the pericardium and it's responsible for the protective covering of the heart. It's responsible for the protective covering of the heart and also it prevents over distension of the heart. Now let's talk about the visceral pericardium. The visceral pericardium attaches to the myocardium and it also fits in the plane to the heart. Now, in between the, peri the periatal pericardium and the myocardium, on the, on the, uh, the visceral pericardium, there is a potential space here, or you call it a virtual space. It's small in nature, just a small space. And it is filled with what we call pericardial fluid. Now, what's the function of the pericardial fluid? The per function of the pericardial fluid is to avoid friction while the heart is beating. We all know that our heart beats on a daily basis, on a constant basis, per second, per minute. The heart is beating. So, too much excess beating of the heart could lead to friction. So, this fluid maintains the movement of the heart and prevents friction. Now let's come over to the second layer which talks about the myocardium. This is the middle layer and the largest layer of the heart. Now the myocardium is made up of what we call cardiac muscle and that cardiac muscle is only, is only located in the heart. That type of cardiac muscle is only located in the heart. The other types of muscle, the skeletal and the smooth muscles are located in other parts of the heart. So, the myocardium is made up of the cardiac muscle and another thing we must know is that it is involuntary in nature, meaning that you and I cannot control the movement of the myocardium. The myocardium is responsible for contraction of the heart. If you touch, you place your hands on your chest and you know, your heart begins to beat. That is what we call contraction, that forceful squeezing of the heart. It is the myocardium that is responsible for it. Another thing the myocardium is responsible for is initiation and conduction of impulses, of electrical impulses. So the myocardium is very, very vital and it's a very, very important layer of the heart. Now the third layer is the endocardium. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart. Very, 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 very important. Now, the endocardium is made up of smooth epithelium 
of simple smooth epithelium and it lines the inner layer of the heart it also lines the valves of the heart and that is why whenever there is a disease that affects the endocardium there is every possibility that the valves of the heart will be affected for example in endocarditis there is every possibility that the inflammation might also get to the valves all right now we are going to be looking at the chambers of the heart First of all, I'd like to tell us that the heart is divided into two parts. We have the right and we have the left. Now, in between the right and the left, there is this, there's a structure here which we call the septum. The septum. This septum divides the right part from the left. For example, this upper septum here divides the right atrium from the left atrium and we can call this the interatrial septum while this septum here divides the right ventricle from the left ventricle and it is called the interventricular septum now looking at the chambers of the heart, the heart has four chambers what are they? we have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. These make up the chambers of the heart. One thing we must know is that the muscle layer, which is the myocardium, is thicker at the right and left ventricles of the heart. Now, furthermore, we're going to talk about the valves of the heart. Now, these valves are structures in the heart that help or prevent backflow of blood. In another video, we'll be talking about blood flow through the heart. So we'll dwell more on that. So what are these valves? There are two groups of valves that mix up the heart. The first one is the AV valves. And the second is the semilunar valves. The AV valves is the atrioventricular, atrioventricular, that is meaning between the atrium and the ventricles. So these valves we have here, and this one, they are the, um, the atrioventricular valves. For the right, is either we call this valve atrioventricular, right atrioventricular valve or tricuspid valve. Why is it called tricuspid? It's because the valve is made up of three leaflets or three cups that encloses it so that's why it's called tricuspid while these left atrioventricular valves can either be called mitral valve or we also call it bicuspid valve now the semilunar valves what are they the semilunar valves are called semilunar because they look their inner portion looks like half moon we all know semi means half and lunar means moon. So half moon structures located in those valves. What are they? First of all, to the right, we have the pulmonary valve, which controls movement of blood to the pulmonary artery. And also we have the aortic valve, this place here, which controls the movement of blood into the aorta. Now, that is that about the valves. Now, we're going to look at the blood supply to the heart. Now, because of the function or the workload of the heart, the heart receives about 5% of total blood supply to the whole body. Now, the, the blood supply to the heart, the arterial supply to the heart is through the coronary arteries while the venous drainage is through branches of the coronary veins which drains into the coronary sinuses now the nervous supply to the heart the heart finally is supplied by the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves of the vagus nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve so with this we've come to the end of anatomy of the heart Thank you for listening and please if you have not subscribed, I'd like you to subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.